Have you ever thought, there's got to be a better and simpler way to learn organizational strategies? 5 Minutes Learning has a global and diverse collection of case studies to help management students click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our upcoming and interesting case studies. Let me tell you a story about a company that had to make a tough decision in order to become the best. Have you ever wondered how Zappos, one of the most popular online shoe retailers, got started? At first, Zappos' model was to partner with shoe companies and provide an extensive selection of products without any inventory or order fulfillment costs. This means that their customers could place orders through their website and their partner companies would then fulfill the orders. Zappos would then collect the retail price and pay the vendors the wholesale price. But then something happened that changed the company's strategy. They shifted their focus to customer satisfaction, and that's when they realized that they needed to make a change to their business model. In 2003, they made a bold move and started fulfilling all orders from their own inventory. This change enabled them to maintain complete control over the entire process, from selection and inventory to shipping and handling. This, in turn, allowed Zappos to ensure that their customers received their products as fast as possible, and they could take care of any issues that arose. And, as we all know, Zappos' emphasis on customer satisfaction has paid off, making them one of the most trusted and beloved retailers online. Zappos' original business model was a game-changer in the retail industry, but it wasn't without its flaws. The dropship approach worked by partnering with shoe companies, allowing customers to order shoes through Zappos' website, which were then fulfilled by the shoe companies. This model was great in theory, but it came with its own set of challenges. One of the most significant issues was the accuracy of inventory information on the website. With manual updates reliant on information from vendors through fax, phone, or email, the inventory information was only about 95% accurate. Customers would often order products that were not in stock, leading to long delivery times or canceled orders. The second issue was that Zappos couldn't track when a customer order was shipped, leading to delayed delivery times and customer frustration. Zappos only found out about issues when a customer called to inquire about their order. These problems led Zappos to shift its business strategy and focus on customer satisfaction, resulting in a new and improved business model. Let's dive into Zappos' shift from a dropship approach to stocking their inventory. In November 2000, the company started purchasing a physical store in Willows, California, to meet the requirement of some of its vendors, who required a brick-and-mortar store before partnering with an online supplier. But Zappos didn't stop there. The company went on to purchase an abandoned department store across the street and converted it into a warehouse and distribution center. This was a smart move since the area was less expensive than San Francisco Bay, and it gave them a physical space to store their inventory. However, Willows wasn't the ideal location for an internet distribution center, as it lacked a major airport. As a result, Zappos had to rely on UPS ground for shipping, making the warehouse a manual operation. Despite carrying its inventory, the company still continued to use the dropship approach with many vendors. But with the implementation of their new inventory system, Zappos was finally able to tackle one of the significant issues they faced, which is customer frustration due to inaccurate inventory information. Stay tuned to know more about how Zappos addressed their customers' needs while revolutionizing the online shopping experience. Zappos had reached a point where their success was beginning to pose new challenges. As their inventory grew, their current 30,000 square feet distribution center was no longer able to accommodate the volume of products they were handling. UPS saw an opportunity and offered to manage Zappos inventory and fulfillment. It seemed like a great solution, but when they conducted a thorough analysis, 
They realized the system could not handle the vast number of stock-keeping units required by Zappos. With every shoe style, size, and color considered a separate SKU, Zappos had 70,000 to 80,000 SKUs at the time, which rendered the system unworkable. In order to provide exceptional service to their customers, Zappos knew they needed to develop their own distribution center. They found an inexpensive building in Kentucky, but due to a lack of capital, they had to build the warehouse as inexpensively as possible. They used static inventory shelving and handheld barcode scanners, but the cost of wireless communication was beyond their budget. Despite having no previous experience in developing complex inventory management systems and no other companies to model after, Zappos developed their own systems in-house, focused on high SKU intensive business with perfect inventory accuracy. The company's CEO even moved to Kentucky for five months to help bring up the new warehouse, doing much of the software coding himself. As the company grew, the IT group made plans to double the capacity for the following year's holiday season. They implemented a random stocking approach to prevent shipping problems and missing spaces in stock bins. Zappos continued to increase its warehousing capacity, adding automation with conveyors and carousels that spun until they reached the needed item, and even installing a robotic system that increased worker efficiency and scalability. In its early days, Zappos relied on vendors for order fulfillment through a process called drop shipping. As the company grew, they realized that customers who received orders shipped from Zappos' own warehouse were happier than those who received drop shipped orders. It was then that Zappos decided to redefine itself as a service company that happens to sell shoes and discontinued the use of drop shipping even though it meant cutting off 25% of its business in the short term. By bringing all inventory in-house, Zappos was able to increase inventory accuracy to nearly 100%, ensuring that any item a customer selected online was in stock. They even displayed inventory statistics on their homepage, showing the impressive numbers of brands, styles, and products available for shipment. All this was done to deliver exceptional customer service, and it worked. Zappos became a recognized leader in superior service. Imagine a world where the latest shoe styles were only available at trade shows and retailers had to place orders for the entire selling season without any knowledge of what styles would be popular. This was the traditional way of doing things before Zappos came along. But with the advent of the internet, Zappos saw an opportunity to revolutionize the shoe industry. Zappos introduced a new way of selling shoes online, and they quickly became known for their exceptional customer service. However, it wasn't just their service that made them successful. Zappos had a unique approach to purchasing and inventory management. The merchandising department had a team of 100 employees, half of whom were buyers and assistant buyers. They worked closely with vendors and had access to an extranet, where they could view on-hand inventory, sales, pricing, and margins. By having thousands of buyers evaluating inventory, Zappos was able to make optimal purchasing decisions and increase sales. Zappos' innovative approach to inventory management helped them become the go-to destination for shoe shopping online. They didn't just sell shoes, they provided an unparalleled customer experience that kept people coming back for more. Zappos was not just another online shoe retailer. Their approach to supply chain management was revolutionary, to say the least. In 2007, the company acquired 6pm.com, an online shoe retailer. But instead of operating it as a separate entity, they integrated it into Zappos' supply chain. What's more interesting is that the two sites displayed different products. The integrated system allowed Zappos to help manufacturers sell directly to customers by developing and running websites, call centers, and optimized distribution systems. 
The program was called Powered by Zappos. With this program, Zappos could purchase inventory and sell it at retail prices to customers who accessed it through different websites. And that was not all. Several companies participated in the program, and Zappos created a supply web where the same inventory could be accessed through many websites. This made it easier for manufacturers to sell directly to consumers. When it comes to excess inventory, retailers often struggle to balance making room for new inventory and maintaining profit margins. But, for Zappos, managing slow-moving inventory is a challenge that they have successfully tackled. As an online retailer, they don't have to clear shelf space like physical stores, so they focus on buying the right products in the right quantities to minimize excess inventory. However, when excess inventory is unavoidable, Zappos has developed innovative solutions that don't compromise its brand or margins. Their automated system marks down prices based on customer behavior rather than just making room for new products. The company has also opened outlet stores and purchased the online shoe company 6PM to provide an avenue for discounted slow-moving inventory that won't tarnish the Zappos brand. Additionally, Zappos has teamed up with Overstock to drop ship excess inventory to its customers. Zappos' unique approach to managing excess inventory has proven that exceptional customer service doesn't have to come at the cost of profits. With a focus on smart buying decisions and a multi-pronged strategy for dealing with slow-moving inventory, Zappos is able to keep their brand and margins intact. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.